Fibonacci was a guy called Leonardo of Pisa. He was a mathematician around 1100 AD. He did a lot of different mathematics, and one of the most famous things he discovered was the Fibonacci sequence or the Fibonacci numbers. He took the numbers 0 and 1, added them together to get 1. He took the last two numbers of that list, 1 and 1, added them to get 2. And he kept adding the last two numbers of the list to generate the next numbers. Now, take any two neighbouring Fibonacci numbers, divide the larger by the smaller, and you get roughly 1.618. Nature's number, 1.618.03.39.88.74.98.94.84. But in general, the golden ratio is a forgotten number. Millions of people adore the simplicity of zero. Many others are enchanted by the paradoxes of infinity. And everybody loves pi. But who cares about the golden ratio? Well, I'm going to prove to you that this much-neglected number is central to everything from sunflowers to snail shells, from parking meters to the Parthenon. Television screens are not so far removed from golden ratio. Postcards, photographs. It seems to me the real point here is that if it's going to be a rectangle, then it shouldn't be too square, because then it looks like a failed square, and it shouldn't <laughs> be too long and thin, because then it doesn't really look like a rectangle. And in between is, is about one and two thirds, and, and this is very close to the golden number. So the golden number creates the golden rectangle, or perhaps that should be the Goldilocks rectangle. Not too thin, not too fat, just right. And for thousands of years, artists have exploited this proportion. Around the Renaissance, the Renaissance painters and artists and sculptors went back to all this beautiful Greek inspiration of the Golden Age and they used the Golden Mean a lot of the time in defining the ratio of paintings, the perspective of objects inside paintings, the position in a painting which is the perspective point normally of exactly where Jesus will be holding the candle or exactly where the woman's left eye will be looking or something like that is often defined by the geometry and ratio of the Golden Mean. So it comes through a lot of ancient and then Renaissance art and architecture. That was Adam Spencer, an Australian rock DJ with a penchant for pure mathematics. Leonardo da Vinci seems to have thought that 1.618 defined perfect proportions within the human body. And Piet Mondrian's rectangular art repeatedly incorporated the golden ratio. And the Parthenon has golden rectangles within it. But it's not just art. The golden ratio also appears in nature. The ventricles in the heart reset themselves at the golden ratio point in the heart's rhythmic cycle and divide the pitch of a DNA spiral by its diameter and you get roughly the golden ratio. These could be coincidences, but there is at least one natural structure that definitely reflects the golden ratio. The precision is uncanny. If you create a rectangle that's in the ratio of the golden mean, if you break inside that to a smaller rectangle, that's in golden ratio and a smaller rectangle within that, within that, within that. You keep drawing a series of rectangles inside each other. They're all sort of spiralling round inside the big rectangle in that divided ratio, the golden ratio. You can create something called the spiral of Archimedes. So hang on, so I generate a whole series of, of ever-decreasing rectangles that are sort of vanishing into a point in the middle. Then take your pen and dot the bottom right-hand corner of each of those rectangles as you drew them. You can join those points up in a spiral. And this beautiful spiral occurs in snail shells, in crustaceans, in many places in the natural world. Nature's number, 1.618 03 39 88